What is going on, everyone? So today we're going to be talking about microprocessors and how to get started with using them if you have no idea what you're doing and you're a complete beginner. By the end of this video, you should have an idea of what exactly you need to do in order to get started with using a microprocessor, and then you can start using them in your design after this. Before we go any further, though, please go ahead and drop a like on the video for me and subscribe if you like to stay up to date with any future videos. We're actually going to be doing some example projects that feature microprocessors. So if that's something you're interested in, let's just jump right into it. I have a little list of notes that I want to go through because before I get started with showing you any type of application circuits, I think it'd be a good idea to give you a basic overview of, of what exactly a microprocessor is and then maybe kind of how they work. So that's a good segue to the first question. What is a microprocessor and how does it work? Well, much like a normal processor that you'd see in a computer, for example, like an AMD Ryzen 3700K, Microprocessor is a smaller, much simpler version of one of those big old powerful CPUs. And one example that we'll talk about later on is something like the F280021 from TI. I think pictures are a really powerful way to relay information. So let's just take a couple, let's take a look at a couple of pictures of processors. So right here I have pulled up the AMD Ryzen. Hopefully if anyone here has like built their own computer or at least taken a look at the inside of a computer, this should look kind of familiar. Usually there's a big old like heat sink on top of this thing to help cool it down. But basically, yeah, yeah, there's like flat, uh, square, sometimes rectangular, like little chip looking thing that kind of drops into a little slot. And this does all of the major lift. This is basically the brain of the whole system. Now, this one right here, if you look, this thing costs $640. If we take a look over here, this is an example of a microprocessor. So it kind of resembles, has the same kind of look. We have a square chip, right, with a bunch of little pins coming out. And the main difference, though, is, well, for one, this is actually much smaller. But for two, it's a, it's way, way cheaper. Like, this thing will probably run you, like, a couple bucks at most, right? At high quantities of, like, uh, high volumes of uh, products, you're looking at way less than a dollar, right? That's actually one of the first major differences between a, what you would consider a central processing unit and a microprocessor is just the complexity is scaled down a whole bunch. And so you get added benefits of it being way, way cheaper. And also I mentioned later on is they consume much less power, right? So those are the main main uh, advantages of a microprocessor is it's small, it's specified, it's cheap, it uses very little power. Now microprocessors have four main functions, at least four that I've kind of distinguished for the purposes of this beginner video. One of them is that they read data in. The other is they send data out. They store data in memory and they perform mathematical and logical computations. So I just have a little quick hypothetical example that kind of highlights all of the functions. This is basically an example of a microprocessor doing all of those functions. The example is that a microprocessor reads the value of an analog signal over time and computes the RMS value or root mean square value of that signal. If the RMS value is greater than one, the MPU blinks an LED. So that's a pretty good example of how a microprocessor might work on a board or a circuit board in a design. And so that pretty much highlights most of the key functionalities of what you can kind of expect out of a microprocessor and its capabilities. So next up, I want to talk about the anatomy of a microprocessor. Um, the main question that kind of drives this is, how does a microprocessor physically take in and send out data? And maybe you kind of already inferred that from this photo, but it these little pins on the side of it are basically physical electrical connections that we would form with the outside world or other circuits on the board that are interacting with the outside world for us. The pins on the microprocessor are the main way in which it interacts with this environment they can be classified into four major categories again this is a distinction that i've made and i think it's good for the purposes of a beginner tutorial like i have a little asterisk and here this is not an exhaustive list but it's a good starting point for beginners i think you'll have plenty to work with if you understand these four major categories first category is general purpose input output or gpio for short second category is analog to digital converters adcs or digital to analog converters dacs you have wired communication communication, something if you're familiar, if you ever heard of SPY or I squared C or CAN or UART or SCI, those are all acronyms that denote different varieties of wired communication. And that's how a, it's like a quick way for a microprocessor to communicate with either another processor or in some cases, other integrated circuits. 
and we can take some a look at some of those and some example projects that we'll do later on. So you have wired communication and then you have power and ground, right? Because the processor needs power to function. So that's like, you know, a key uh, type of pin that you'll see on the microprocessors. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, so I know some stuff about microprocessors. So how exactly do I get started with using one? A processor needs two major circuits before you can actually start using it in your design. The first one being a circuit that allows you to program the microprocessors. You know, it, whenever you're using a microprocessor you're obviously going to be writing code right that tells it how to operate that controls the behavior of it that gives it instructions for operating and the way you do this is and for the purpose of this video i only talk about one there's some other ways but in industry and one way to get one way that is that i think you should be familiar with is most familiar with in fact is the j tag this is a pretty much across the industry standard you'll see on any like mass produced product they all use j tags to program them and so we'll talk about some of those in a quick example that i'll show those are the first first type of circuit you need to know how to design because you do need to know how to design a j tag circuit because it's a type of wire communication but it requires a, a couple of things in order to get it up and running so that you can actually effectively communicate and send those instructions to your processor. The JTAG is the number one, the first circuit you need to learn how to make. The second circuit that you need to learn how to make is a circuit that provides power to the microprocessor. This is, there's sort of like two parts to this. For one, like on this channel, you if you watch any of my other videos, we talk a lot about power supplies. And the whole reason for that was, at least that's, that's why I started with my videos. So that's the projects that I started out with because in electrical engineering, if you don't know how to design a power supply, you're not going to get very far, right? Because pretty much everything needs power, including a microprocessor. So we are going to be seeing some of those classical power supply designs that I featured on this channel. So that's one of them. But secondly, there's some sort of like auxiliary style components and we'll see them in an example I'll show in a minute. But there's a few more things you got to do to the microprocessor itself that help it function. And uh, there's a lot of stuff like smoothing caps and bypass capacitors and stuff like that. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I go over to a schematic. In fact, here we can actually go over to a schematic right now so you see exactly what I'm talking So this is just a quick example project that I'm currently working on. So that's kind of why I thought I'd, I'd break this down. Um, so this isn't fully fleshed out. This, for the purposes of being able to program a processor, this is fully fleshed out, but we still need a few other things to on the board itself to make it actually work. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this P1 circuit right here. So this circuit is what, this is the JTAG circuit, right? So it's comprised of a header pin right here. And let's go over to the layout so you can see. So it's a 14 position. It just looks like a row of, of header pins just like this, right? So hopefully that's familiar. In fact, let me see if I can go over to this row of header pins. That's kind of what a JTAG looks like, but it's only 14 positions, right? So that's the JTAG circuit. And then there's also some other components here. Where I have some various pull-up resistors, a filtering cap right here and this is a transient voltage suppressor right here and then you see we have these four communication lines that go directly to the processor and this is what allows the JTAG to, to communicate with the processor and send those instructions out so the second project or the second circuit that I just talked about is the power circuit right so if you see here we have 3.3 volts coming in VDDI open and then we also have it coming into this VDDA pin and then everything else we just got a bunch of uh, bypass and smoothing caps, filtering capacitors around here. And then we have some analog and digital grounds. The where I got this circuit from is the data sheet tells you what all the all capacitors you need on this circuit, right? And then so yeah, basically I got all this information from the data sheet right here. I would say for a beginner tutorial, what if I'll tell you this? We're gonna go over these circuits right here in extreme detail when, whenever I uh, release the actual project video for this board. For right now, I'm just trying to introduce you to the fact that we need this is a power circuit, and then this is a JTAG circuit. And the same thing goes for the JTAG circuit, is I'll go in extreme details of how I picked all these component values and everything like that whenever we release the project video. But for now, I think just explaining some of the basics is good, good enough. And then we can just quickly go over to the layout and I'll just point out the different stuff to you. So like I said, we have header pins right here. This is the actual processor itself. And then we have the, that's the transient voltage suppressor. And then on the back side of the board, we got a bunch of caps and stuff. I don't think I'm finished with the layout yet. Like I still have layout work to do, so I'm not sure this is final. So don't worry about any of this stuff yet. Like I said, we'll go into this stuff in extreme detail whenever I do my project video on this little project that we're working on. But I just want to talk about some of the microprocessor basics and introduce you to what's going on 
That way, when I do the project video, I can go into extreme detail and you're not completely lost about what on earth is going on and how everything works. So that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to talk about for the microprocessor basics video. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and drop a comment down below. If you have any stuff you want me to show in more detail when I talk about microprocessors, I'd be more than happy to do that. And uh, yeah, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.